I'm here at the European Chemicals Agency, where a scientific workshop is about to start soon. Researchers, regulators and scientists from across the globe are discussing the latest developments in new approaches to predict effects of chemicals. There are three main benefits to this. Firstly, we can get more accurate study results. Secondly, we can get them in a more cost-effective way. And thirdly, we can help to minimize testing on animals. During the workshop, I talked to some of the guests to find out what these new methods are and what benefits they bring. Compared to the traditional animal observation in animal studies, the new approach methods are actually based on the science and the knowledge uh, how a chemical can enter into the body, how it can react in the body and interact with the biological system. Um, they're cheaper and they're faster and they allow us to really take advantage of the knowledge of the past. We'll be able to make better decisions about the safety of chemicals, uh, quicker ones um, and more efficient decisions on these chemicals. It's really also to, to, to prove that these methods can be used and, and at some point replace the animals uh, because they're better predicting for the human situation. There are quite a few methods that can already be used. Eye irritation, skin irritation, and also skin sensitization today that is a systemic one. Uh, you have alternatives that you can use. Then there are more research and development needed for the more complex endpoints. And we have now developed tools, read across tools, which are allowing in a second to find the 30, 50, 70 substances which have chemical similarity. This additional information, these additional methodologies help basically to improve the read across cases. For the registrants themselves, um, it's an advantage because they actually know where they stand if they do their job right. When talking to the guests, I was also interested to know about the challenges and how we can overcome them. The, the conference here has been very good to, to identify what are the barriers in towards a more broader use of these new approaches in evaluating chemicals. The regulatory acceptance is not yet quite there. Um, people are still a bit reticent to use these methods because uh, the confidence is not yet really there in using them. What we need now is courage. Yeah. Courage from the registrant to do these studies and then also courage from the authorities to accept such cases. With that, I guess registrants will do more studies, will add more data, the read across cases will get better, the likelihood of getting them accepted will increase and yet you, you spiral up and I think that's where we should be going. It would be best if uh, uh, companies are being regulated in, 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 a, in a very similar way and that these tests, these new approaches are, are being employed in a very similar fashion. It is very important that this partnership between academia, industry, and the regulators is taking place to find new ways. It is about applying the best possible science to save animals and establish a level of safety um, which we haven't had before. So the workshop has just finished. Derek, what would you say were the main outcomes? Well, I think the main thing was the, the really important and fascinating discussion that we had with different colleagues, different scientists from different fields. We had a very interesting discussion about how new approach methods could be used for priority setting, screening and priority setting, which is what the regulators were interested in. And then in the, the closing session was thinking about how um, new approach methods in general could be used within a broader regulatory application for safety assessment as a whole, rather than just simply replacing an animal study. So what will concretely happen next? There'll be some various suggestions for further work that, w that have already arisen, um, either at international level or by our sister agencies, such as EFSA um, or JRC, or working closely with the US EPA, for example. Well, thank you very much, Derek. Thank and uh, thank you for joining us here in Helsinki. The uh, workshop materials will be on our website soon.